At the end of this week's Parsha, uh, the Torah describes for us a, uh, something which uh, is problematic why the Torah should even discuss that with us. And that is that Yosef, uh, the people of Egypt, could not afford to buy food. So first he uh, took their cattle, and then he took their land, and he scattered them throughout Egypt. And Rakad Masakonim, the uh, land that belonged to the Egyptian clergy, uh, that the, in, and he made a deal with the people that uh, uh, Paro and uh, the government would take a certain percentage and the rest of it would uh, remain with them, etc., etc. So what's the purpose of this? Uh, the Torah is telling us about a, uh, an economic system that existed thousands of years ago. So there are, again, in the Mephorshim, there are various streams. It's a problem that all the Mephorshim are aware of. So one idea is that he did it because uh, the Torah mentions it uh, to point out that the Jewish people, uh, when they lived in Goshen, uh, were not different than anybody else. People were scattered all over the country. And that was a favorite uh, method of all rulers in order to uh, quell any uprising against them is to scatter people everywhere. And we find that the Gemara says that Sancheriv, who was the great uh, general and king of Ashur, so Bo Sancheriv uvilvela Saolo. His policy was that he took everybody away from where they lived and scattered them so that there would never be a critical mass, so to speak, of nationalism that would be able to rebel against him. And uh, he certainly did that with the Jewish people because he took the Aser Sashvantim, and we don't quite know what happened to them, where, where, whether they disappeared or they reintegrated, or, but they lost their identity as being a unit, the Aser Sashvantim. So that was a policy, the policy of uh, rulers. And therefore, the Torah wants to indicate to us that Yosef did that because of the fact that he was afraid a whole bunch of his whole family is coming to Eretz Goshen, uh, that there would be repercussions. People always resent immigrants. Uh, for whatever reason. And so therefore he wanted to prevent that the, his family would somehow rub people wrong, so nobody, uh, nobody was home, so to speak. If nobody was home, then everybody is home, so it doesn't make a difference. That's one uh, uh, view of the matter of why the Torah even bothered to tell us. <coughs> But another view of the matter that the Mephorshim discuss is that the Torah wanted us to have a window into that society because they wanted us to understand how does it happen that they come to Mitzrayim and Yosef who are shalit and everything is good and uh, Paro uh, wants to be blessed by Yaakov and the Jewish people settle in Eretz Goshen and how does the thing go sour so soon? Why does it go like that? So the Torah wanted us to see that the people had resentments. So there's a lesson here. Everybody has a resentment. You know, everybody feels, you know, 
I never, never heard somebody make a brocha shechionu on paying masach nasa. <laughs> we all have our, uh, you know, government, uh, you know. The attitude is always a negative atti- attitude. There never, in the history of the world, there's never been a positive attitude towards government. Uh, Menachem Begin's uh, famous quip was that the last government that the newspaper Haaretz approved of was the British Mandate. <laughs> we, uh, you know, that's our nature. And that uh, because of that, because of the resentment, so Yosef is aware of the resentment. So again, it was his policy to try and minimize it. So he tried to do the best that he can. Now on one hand, he knows they're gonna resent the fact that he took away their land, that he took away their animals, that they have to pay such a heavy tax to Paro on what they grow. Now who is going to be the scapegoat for that resentment? So they're going to remember that Yosef was the one that did it. Now, Yosef may have no choice, uh, right? He's running the government. <coughs> but uh, he, uh, and that's why it says that it came a paro asher yoda as Yosef. So but there's all sort of shot him what it means he didn't know Yosef. But one of the shot him is he didn't know Yosef positively. He heard the complaints of the people. He said, what do you want from me? Yosef, the Jew did it to you. I didn't do anything to you. I inherited the system. But who set up the system? Who was the one that did it? And because of that, therefore, he was able to deflect the resentment of the people from him uh, to the Jewish people, uh, and the Egyptians enslaved the Jewish people. You can't enslave a people unless you have public opinion on your side, unless the nation wants it as well. And therefore, uh, uh, the uh, Torah tells us this story as a precursor to what is going to happen in the Chumash Shmos, in the parsha of Shmos and Vaera, the resentment against the Jewish people was so great, and the resentment stemmed from Yosef's uh, rulings. Now, uh, in the history of the Jewish people throughout the centuries, and wherever we have been. Uh, Jews in high public office have rarely, if ever, brought us nachas. Rarely, if ever, has it been a positive thing. Because high public office, the country is always split 50-50. Sometimes it's 55-45, but whatever. You know, that's a landslide today, 55-45. But it means that at least uh, 45 to 50 percent of the population thinks the government is off. <coughs> and because of that, therefore, we always look for whom to blame. Why is it this way? And throughout the history, wherever there were Jews who were in high public office, that's exactly what happened. That was true in Spain. It was true later in the Middle Ages regarding the court Jews. So there were Jews that always served in the courts of the emperors and the kings. Almost all of them ended up being executed. You know, one of Hitler's great propaganda movies was uh, Jew Sis, who was a court Jew. And uh, we used it to show that 
Jews oppress the people. So there's always a danger when Jews rise to high office. And we see that today. Uh, it's, it's what I think it's one of the problems that faces American Jewry is there's too many Jewish names. Schiff and Nadler and Schumer and, and all Jew. Well, what's a Jew racist? And uh, that reverberates. It, uh, it always has. So uh, it's hard to make a decision. But the Torah tells us all of this is to warn us, uh, if that's the right word, but at least to inform us that the, the Egyptian slavery did not, uh, was not born out of nothing. And it wasn't that one day they got up and said, oh, we're going to do this. It's a, a period of time of resentment. And eventually, Paro, and that's why the Torah tells us, Asher Yoda as Yosef, Paro doesn't, he, uh, he minimizes all the positive things that Yosef did, that he saved Egypt and he saved civilization. None of that makes a difference anymore. He makes it a shaloyana as Yosef that no one should know that Yosef did anything good. So the only thing Yosef will be remembered is that he took away your cattle, he took away your land, he imposed taxes. That's what they'll remember. And because of that, therefore, uh, it became... Uh, relatively easy for Paro. And that explains what the Meforshim always discuss. Why were all the Egyptians punished for Paro's hard-heartedness? Paro says no. Okay, but you know, leaders, what are the people? The answer is the people. Paro is a product of the people. Hitler was a product of Germany. It's not nice to say today, but that's the truth. Chairman Mao is a product of the Chinese. You are what you are. And because of that, therefore, uh, the Torah wants to indicate that to us. And it always does these things indirectly, not directly. <coughs> because the Torah has 70 facets to it, and you have to be able to figure it out, so to speak. And it speaks to all generations. So things that in some generation are completely not understandable in other generations are clear. So we have to be able to see ourselves in the picture, in the story, in order that the Torah speaks to us as well.